Hi everyone, welcome back to No Skits. So let's solve another interesting question of tree from Uber Frequent 52 problem. So let's see what the question says and how we can approach to a problem. Okay, so today we are going to solve this problem. Find duplicate subtree. So let's read the problem statement. Given the root of the binary tree, return all duplicate subtrees. For each kind of duplicate subtree, you only need to return root node of any one of them. Two trees are duplicate if they have the same structure with the same node values, right? So first of all, let's understand the problem statement and uh, let's understand the problem statement and see how we'll, uh, we'll start approaching the problem. Okay, so this tree is given in the question. This tree is given in the question and we are supposed to find all the duplicate subtrees. We are supposed to find all the duplicate subtrees. Now let's see uh, how many duplicate subtrees are present in it. So if we'll start from root, there is no subtree present which is which will be same as this root, right? So let's go to this. If we'll see, we have this 2 and 4. And at the right also, we have this 2 and 4, right? So that means one subtree, duplicate subtree will be 2 and 4, 1, right? Another will be 4 and 4 because both of them have null in their left and right child. So another will be 4 and 4. So that means in this case, in this example, in this example, we have two duplicate subtrees. Right. Now let's see one more example. We have this tree, right? So root is 1, then 2 and 4 and then 2 and 4. So now let's see how many duplicate trees are possible. So if you'll see both are pointing to null. So this subtree is common in, uh, in, in the tree, right? So that means one subtree that is duplicate is this one, right? Is this one. Now, what can be other subtree? What can be other subtree? 2 and 4. 2 and 4. But if you will see, we have 4, 2 and null. This is null. And in this case, we have null, 2 and 4. But are these tree matching? No. They are different subtrees. Because 4 is the left child of 2 in this one. 4 is the right child of 2 in this one, right? So these are not, these are not duplicate, right? This will not be considered as two duplicate subtrees. These are different subtrees, right? So I hope you understood the problem statement that how and when we are calling a subtree as duplicate to another subtree, right? The structure should be same. That is, if 2 is root node, the left should be same and the right should be same. So just try to think how we can uh, how we can deal with this problem. So if we are given a tree, so if we are given this tree, right? So what I can do? I'll start from this node. I'll I'll do the traversal. So when I'll traverse, I'll get one. Let's say I am doing a pre-order traversal, right? So two, one, two, four, two and four. I'll get this. When I'll traverse this, I'll get 2 and then 4. When I'll traverse with this node, I'll get 4. Now I'll come to this right and I'll start traversing 2 and 4. Then I'll get uh, 4, right? So now can I, can I say that after traversing, after traversing each of the tree, after traversing each of the subtree, I can see whether we have two common two same subtrees right if we have two same subtrees i'll say that these number of uh, duplicate subtrees are present and we can simply return the node of it now how can you do this also if if you saw that we had two and four right but if this is not present this is present then also you'll be getting two and four right so to differentiate this we must have something right so let's see what we can do Okay, so first of all, we'll start from this one. We'll start from this one. So this is our uh, this is our root node. Now before uh, before ro uh, root and before the left child, I'll put one unique identifier. You can put it as hash at the rate or any other specific uh, character, right? So one two one two, and then we'll come to this. So again, we'll get four, right? We'll come to this. So there is nothing. So if this is null, let's say we are putting one more hash if this is null right 
I'll come to this, right? I'll come to this, so hash and this two, right? Then I'll come to this, so hash and four. And since this is null, we'll put hash, right? Similarly, I'll start from this. So two, then four, right? So two, and then we'll get four. So between two and four, I'm putting this unique identifier. Now, when the left traversal will complete, it will come to right. So, since this is null, I will put a hash between right and left. So, this is hash only for us, right? So, now the traversal is complete at this point. Now, I will come to this right. Okay, I will come to this 4. So, 4. So, there is no left, there is no right. But these are empty, right? These are null. So, I will keep it like this. Now, come to this right. So, 2 hash will come to this left. So, this will be 4 right come to this right so this will be hash again well when we'll talk about four hash so now if you'll see we have these two same and we have these two same right so now we can see that we have these two duplicate trees and we can simply return the root of it so corresponding to this we can store the root of this right and we can simply return the root at the end Okay, so now we saw this, right? Let's see if this this was the right child. If this was the right child, what will be the traversal? 2, hash, hash. This is for left and this is for right. So if you see, they are getting differentiated because of this unique identifier, right? So this is how you can do it. But this is not optimized. So let's try to see the time complexity. So what we are do doing for each of the node, let's say we have n number of nodes, for each of the nodes we are doing DFS traversal, right? So DFS traversal takes n time. So this is for each of the node, right? And this is for DFS. So we are taking n square time. We are taking n square time. And how much space we are taking? How much space we are taking? So for each of the traversal, for each of the traversal we are storing some values, right? There are n nodes. For n corresponding to n nodes, we are storing the traversal for these subtree. The space complexity will also be n square, right? So space and time complexity will be n square. So this is not optimized. So why this is not optimized? So if you will see, if you are traversing through 1, then 2, then 2, 4, right? Again, you will come to this t and you will you come to this 2 and you will again traverse this. So, rather than traversing this 2 and 4 again and again, when you are traversing from starting your traversal from 1, you are going to 2, you are going to 4. So, think of something that you will be able to do it in just one traversal. In just one traversal. So, what we can do? Let's try to see. What we are saying, we have one tree. Let's say we are at this point right we are at this point now what you can do before getting the value of this let's go to this because we know that this one will have this one will have one plus left traversal plus right traverse uh, traversal as its result right so this one will have if we are talking about a node so the node will be having node plus its left traversal plus its right traversal right this will be happening or you can say this node will be having left traversal plus node plus right traversal or maybe you can go for post traversal which will say left traversal plus right traversal plus node right you can go with any of the traversal approach i am going with this right so what i am doing first i'll come to this first i'll come to this i'll say go to its left I'll say go to its left. So I'm starting from this one. From one I'm saying go to its left. So it will go to its left. Again we'll see if left is not null, we'll again go to its left. Now we are at four. We'll again go to its left. So left is null. So what I see, what I, uh, what I say that if this is null, I'll append hash, right? Now from this I'll say go to its right. I'll say go to its right. So it will go to its right. So right is also null. Again, I'll say append hash, right? Okay. So after this, I'll say that traverse the node itself. If you have explored left and right, go to the node. So we have reached this four. At this point, at this point, we'll see whether our map contains this key. 
whether our map contains this key if map does not contains this key we'll store the store this key into our map and we'll store the tree node we'll store the tree node corresponding to it right now after this what i'm saying after exploring the left of 2 go to the right of 2 so right of 2 is right of 2 is null so what i am saying all its left plus all its right plus the node right so left will contain this right will return this hash and the value of node will be 2 so we'll get this key now we'll see if this is not present in our map now we'll see if this is not present in our map we'll store it and it in our map and we'll store the co node corresponding to it now after this what we are saying after this what we are saying if you have explored left of one go to the right of one so we came to the right of one we saw that we have left of two so we are saying go to the left of two so let's come to left of two and what we are saying its left is null its left is null so shares and four so again we will see whether this is present in our map if this is present in our map we'll again if this is present in our map we'll do nothing right now after this if we have completely explored the left of two we'll go to the right of two so let's go to right of two right of two is null right so what we'll do append append the left one which is this and the right one which is this so we'll again end the value we'll again see if it is present if it is present we'll do nothing else we'll store it and store the value okay then after this what we'll do after exploring the left and right of the two we have explored the right of this we'll come to this one we'll come to this one so now we know that from this point and from this right child right from this left and from this right what we are getting we are getting two right and same from this 2 and the 1 so this will be we will again check whether this is present in our map if this is not we will again store it so this is what we are trying to do so if you will see we started from 1 and we just completed everything in just one traversal right so we start how how we, how did we achieve it we started from 1 we went to its left we went to its left so from its left I know that for this 4 we will be getting something from left and right this will be one subtree right so hash hash and four so this will be the value unique value of one subtree now after this after getting this hash hash four i return the call will be returned back right we'll explore the right child right child is null so we'll return hash now what we are doing add this two four hash and two this will be our one subtree right and from this left we'll again do the same thing for right and for this one we'll append everything which is in left everything which is in right and we'll left plus right plus the value of the root node so this is what we are trying to do so let's quickly try to code it and then we'll discuss the time complexity so first of all we'll be needing a result so let's create a result variable we'll be needing a hash map that will be holding a string corresponding to tree node right map okay so at this point what we did we just see that we are not if if we have the value stored in it we did not do anything but for having the duplicate sub three uh, sub three we should know that this key has a count greater than one this key has a count greater that greater than one so let's say we encounter this hash hash four again so let's store the uh, let's store the four again Let, let's store the root again and at the end we'll check whether the size of this list corresponding to this key is greater than one that means we have two subtree with the same structure right so let's create a map with string and list now let's call the dfs we'll call the dfs and we'll pass root and we'll pass our map right after doing it we'll be having something in our map right so what we'll do we'll traverse the map map dot entry and we'll see if entry dot get value dot size 
is greater than 1 then only we'll store it into our result so what we can do we'll store it result dot add entry dot get value because the size is greater than 1 we'll only need the first value because they'll have the same root right so get 0 and finally at the end we can return the result now let's write dfs function to dfs will not return okay dfs will return string right so dfs it will be taking root it will be taking our map so what we are saying if root at any point is equals to is equals to null we'll return one unique identifier let's say hash right after this what we are saying we'll call the function for left subtree right and we'll call the function for right subtree so dfs root dot left comma map dfs root dot right comma map and then finally we'll create one more string hash plus right plus hash plus uh, root dot value right after this what we'll do we'll check whether this is let's get one list list dot list of string we'll be getting right for subtree comma will be uh, if it is not present we'll be getting our list right and then finally we'll put dot subtree we'll add subtree to our list and we'll put it back map dot put for subtree okay so ls is basically for tree node so we'll be storing root to it and then finally we can return subtree right so let's try to run this add plus at this point 2424 let's try to submit it okay and it is accepted right so if you so we modified our dfs uh, dfs search right so what in dfs we have this technique in order pre order yeah pre order in order and post order right so we modified our traversal techniques to achieve this right to see whether there are duplicate subtrees present in the uh, tree or node right so let's try to discuss the time complexity so what we were doing for each of we started from root and we traverse each of the nodes so right so the time complexity will be o of n in this case right so i hope you understood if you know a if you know a pattern because you know how to do dfs search right if you know dfs you can easily approach multiple problems right because the if you'll see this problem for the very first time it might seem uh, you know horrifying but it is not right because if you know dfs you can approach to this problem very easily so i hope you understood something uh, you know new from this problem that's it for this video we'll meet in the next video with another interesting question so till then keep learning thank you